Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at another security camera and it's the WGCC 4 megapixel PoE bullet cam. You can find that on Amazon for $65. So I'm gonna get right into the unboxing and we're gonna see how this performs. Okay, so here we have the mounting instructions it looks like. Just throw that aside. Network bullet cameras, quick guide. So obviously exactly as it says. Just telling you how to set it up, what the default username and password is, and the IP that you'd use to connect to it. But the IP may actually be a bit different. If it's set to DHCP, then after you're good to be getting whatever's off your router. So that side. Here we have the template for the screws. And here we have the camera itself. Comes with your power, your ethernet. Has a nice build to it. Nice aluminum cover here. Here's your infrared sensor. Here's obviously your lens. Here we got the model number. That's an IP camera. So I guess since it is a PoE camera, they don't actually provide you with a power cable. So keep that in mind if you do decide to purchase this after the review. Kind of wish it did come with a power cable just in case you don't currently have a, in case you don't have a PoE switch. I'm gonna boot this up and we're gonna see how it works. So now I have opened up Safari and I was able to locate my IP address off of my router, um, just going off the MAC address that I found on the camera itself. And right from the get-go, you'll see that I am prompted, once I try connecting, is do you trust the website to use the Net SDK Player plugin? I actually went ahead um, ahead of time and installed this on my Mac. Going on any like a Windows PC, Mac PC, you'll need to install like either Chrome plugins or software to get this to run. So to me, that is a big drawback, but if you're not gonna access this camera through the web interface, this may not be a big deal to you. Um, so I'm just gonna hit trust here. And now I'm just gonna log in using the default credentials. So now I'm in the web interface here and I'm gonna go over here to the setup. So I'm just gonna go quickly through each one of these menus. I'm not gonna explain anything in great detail. I'll click on it just to give you enough time to see what is available to you. And then if you have any questions, you could be sure to drop them down in the comments down below and I'll be sure to answer them if I can. And if not, um, I could test them out for you. Got your basic info, local settings, your ethernet if you wanna switch it to a static IP, um, the time so you can set the time on your actual camera your server information, your on-screen display, your on-screen display, so you can put the position of your time to whatever corner you'd want, any place on the screen, your user account, which would just be if you want to add multiple users, allow people access into here. Here's your different network settings, network, DNS, port, uh, dynamic DNS, your P2P, which I'll click on this one here because if you sign up for an account here and you, if you download a P2P software on your phone, you could then be able to remotely view your um, camera footage. Email is just gonna be where, how you wanna send out your email notifications. Video, your different qualities here, your capture mode, uh, how many frames per second the quality of your snapshots, your media stream, once again, your on-screen display. Um, your privacy mask will come in pretty handy if you are uh, mounting this camera outside and you don't want to include someone else's property. You could just hit add here and then you create a little boundary here for where you want to block and you'll notice that now it just makes it black here and it will not record this information, obviously since it's not being viewed. Go intelligent, perimeter, exception detection statistics, face recognition, advanced settings, your events, so your common alarms, this would be for your motion detection, 
during what periods of time. Um, you'd mask the area that you want to receive notifications for. And this is all highly customizable, but um, right out of the box, this um, camera is pretty good in that aspect that everything's pretty much configured for you. So here's your FTP settings. And, and just a thing to note is this camera does not have SD storage built in. So you will need some type of MVR to record your data. So here we have the user accounts again, your network security. Watermark, if you want to put a watermark and your time under your system is once again the same thing as we saw before your server and the maintenance and this is where you'd go to do firmware upgrades or restart your camera okay so the next thing we'll take a look at is um, how to add this into a third-party um, recording software uh, and in my example i would be using my qnap server uh, using surveillance station. It's pretty straightforward. So let's just hop over to that. Okay, so here we are now at my surveillance station and I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new camera here. So I'll click add. And you won't be able to search the camera automatically. So um, depending on what type of software you're using, you would just make sure not to select it. You will need to know the IP of the camera though. So we'll select the, the right channel, channel one. The camera um, brand will actually be, uh, it will actually be OnVIF. And then we'll just keep it at the default profile. We'll call it um, POE camera in my case. The IP. And then we'll put the admin password or the user account password that you're using. Mine's just the admin by default and we'll hit test and here we see our image so we have verified that it is connecting we'll click next one thing i did notice while setting this up is i couldn't get the camera in surveillance station to go past five frames per second um, so if any of you know if i'm missing anything let me know down below click next and this is scheduled recording, so this is essentially saying, hey, record 24 hours a day. And then we'll click next again. And now here we see that I am now going through my NAS, and here's the version of my NAS right here, my NAS name, and the bill number. And that's pretty much it for that. So next we're going to take a look at some quality samples of how it performs during um, proper daylight as well as some um, dark scenes. So let's get right into it. So this footage was taken at 1080p, 25 frames per second. As you can see, it does provide a pretty clear picture during the daylight. Switching over to the night test, um, you will notice that it is considerably grainy. Walking through here, I am looking all blurry. Can't really notice my face or the detail on my shirt. Just going up to the camera provided the most detail. So overall, I found this camera a bit of a chore to set up. Um, not being able to connect just to the browser and just see your live footage, to me was a big hassle. I had to reach out to the actual vendor just because I couldn't find their website to provide any drivers and plugins. And if you do decide to go with this camera, I am gonna drop the links down below just in case you have a hard time finding them like I did. Uh, another thing I wasn't too keen on was the fact that when hooking this up to surveillance station, out of the box, I couldn't figure out how to get it to go more than five frames per second. And normally with the previous cameras I've reviewed, I've, I've never had that issue. So that's where I'm going to end the video today. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below and I'll see you on the next one.